So what is that that you're doing there, Marcy? I'm setting, and I'm using cardboard to level it out so they can all be, you know, kind of evenly. Uh huh. And I use cardboard and to keep it in there. Uh, when it not falling out, I put glue. I use Elmer's glue. Good old Elmer's glue will do the trick, huh? Yep. And in the back, Eugene, are you polishing them? Mm -hmm. I'm buffing them up. Yeah. Buffing them up, and that's, is that the last? That's, uh, yeah, and then it'll be ready for Okay. That's the final phase, is just buffing mm -hmm. them up. So how long does it take you to, to make one one pendant from the beginning to the to the end? Well, let's see how this is just you know guessing. I guess we work together, so I would say we could probably do one one of these in about about an hour. Mm -hmm. You know, just sitting here steady. Right. And that includes polishing the stones mm -hmm. and, and uh, we we have to let the uh, oxidize dry, you know. Mm -hmm. So that takes a little time. But I, I would say hour, give or take, you know, mm -hmm. minutes. And then like for the week, usually we try to work on at least six to ten. You know, try to sell that much at one time. Right. And you guys have probably gotten pretty good at doing them quickly in the 30 years of practice that you've had. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot easier than when we first started. But yeah, it, it, it uh, well, you know, it's, it's our livelihood, so we have to, you know. We started off with just like one stone ear post, mm -hmm. and yeah. I just constantly watch, watching my mom work when I started picking up her style. How long did she do it for? Oh geez. Too, I don't I I really never did find out how long she's been do, she was doing it. Uh, maybe about a um, whole life or her yeah her life. Her whole life. My dad used to be uh, working for the truck truck stop and she would stay home with us and you know work with jewelry to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. How old was she when she passed? Jeez, how old was about 70 something? Close to 80. 80. Close to 80. That's quite a bit of experience then. Mm-hmm. She was still making it, uh, making jewelry when she was sick, huh? Yeah, she was, you know, she, uh, she was bedridden, you know, but uh, she, she got up once in a while, you know, I guess it was just part of her life. Yeah. Yeah. So she just, whenever she felt like it, whenever she felt well enough, she would sit down and do what she could do. So she stuck with it, you know, until the last breath, she, you know, you might say. And you're just picking out which particular stones to use there. You've got a whole, a whole bunch of ones that have been mm -hmm. polished down, to and then you match, choose the ones that to match every uh, to match the, the, the colors have to match. Oh, I just okay. Don't, uh, awesome. I just don't put anything in it. The colors do have to match. Because if there is one that <laughs> that's not, you know. Pretty close to it, then you can spot it right away. It will stand out. So it's more than just choosing the right size. You're also mm -hmm. choosing the right color. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes you seen double you. I guess it, they, a lot of buyers want coral, but you know, at our at our prices. We can't buy the, the $60 and $70 an ounce coral, you know, it just wouldn't uh, mm -hmm. be to our, our benefit because they do like the dark coral, but like I say, you know, the dark coral is so expensive. Right. So we buy 
This what we we usually use it. It costs about thirty five dollars an ounce. Mm -hmm. more and there is a lot of them you waste. Like for yeah, instance, uh, there's some no choice. cracked. See, like this. These. They're not worth it. They're all. It's not. The same with the turquoise, you know, the, the higher price, the, the better, the better the grade, the bluer they are, you know. So right. We, we usually buy what, what our buyers accept. Mm-hmm.